Another way that we can use ARIO and our understanding of stability is to help us predict whether or not a reaction will actually work. What do we mean as chemists when we say, will this reaction work? This is our way of saying, uh, if we wanted to take these two reactants and turn them into these two products, would this be okay? Like, would this actually happen in the lab? So would this reaction work? It's just another way of asking, does this reaction actually happen? If we combined those two reactants together, would we expect the products to be synthesized in reality? Does it work? So to answer this question, we're going to fall back on our understanding of stability and react reactivity. So if a molecule is stable, which means it's happy and it's calm, it is not reactive. And if a molecule is unstable, that means that there's something wrong with it in terms of its bonding situation. It's unstable, so it is reactive. And so when the question is asking, does this reaction work? It's another way of saying or asking, are the reactants unstable compared to the products? Are the products stable compared to the reactants? If the reactants are unstable and the products are stable, then yes, the reaction will work. So let's note that on there. If yes, the reaction works. So let's actually take a look at this reaction and let's see what's going on here. Let's draw a let's draw a mechanism for this reaction. Let's practice that. So we have this um, carbon with a triple bond, an alkyne molecule that is gaining a hydrogen, and it looks like it's grabbing the hydrogen from the oxygen of the other molecule. So let's add some curved arrows to show that reaction taking place. And remember that we want to focus on the electrons that are being used to form that carbon-hydrogen bond. And we will start at those electrons. You can either start from the lone pair or you can start from the actual electrons themselves. Um, or excuse me, I said lone pair, but I meant formal charge. You could start drawing from the formal charge or you can start drawing from the lone pair of electrons and you draw your curved arrow over to the hydrogen atom to show the formation of that carbon hydrogen bond. And then with another curved arrow, we want to show the oxygen hydrogen bond breaking and the lone pair of electrons moving onto the oxygen atom. So there's our mechanism. Now let's focus on the stability. Um, so first of all, the very first thing that I see when we're, when we're um, determining stability, we're going to be using our trick A-R-I-O, ARIO, and that means that we need to start by focusing on which atom has the formal charge. So knowing that that's the first level of analysis for us, when I'm looking at these molecules, when I'm looking at the reactants, I see a carbon with a negative formal charge and I see an oxygen with a positive formal charge. And when I'm looking at my products, I see no formal charges at all, which tells me right off the bat that the products, because they have no formal charges, the products are more stable than the reactants. Because the products are more stable, products, are more stable than reactants. So because the products are more stable than the reactants, yes, this reaction works. 